I, I'm waiting for you to intro. I don't know what you're doing. Take it away, Mark. <laughs> you suck. Anyway, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Nightmare Podcast. Uh, it has been a very, very long time. We are so happy to be here. Um, I got to take partial blame for that. Uh, I started a new job, and it has taken me uh, out of town for four out of the last six weeks. So uh, that's partially my fault. But um, I'm back, and I'm really, really happy to be back. Uh, we are actually doing this podcast in Champagne, Illinois, right now. Um, uh, Champagne? Yeah. Champagne. I, I'm fucking fancy, bitch. We're in Champaign, Illinois. Thank you. You know, thank you for talking like a real normal person, <laughs> not like an asshole. Anyway, so we're here for the Dark History Horror Cons Screaming Mad Film Festival earlier tonight. It's our se- earlier tonight, our second episode of Living Nightmares screened. We got applause. Um, earlier this month, we were at the New Jersey Horror Con and Film Festival, and that was also a blast. We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Uh, tonight is going to be kind of general updates, and we're going to talk about uh, the movies, the horror movies we've watched this October so far. Um, so do you want to start with uh, New Jersey real quick? Is yeah, that sure. Right. I wasn't there. So they have to talk he about wasn't it. there because he was training for his job. Um, however, myself, Zach, and David had a blast at New Jersey. Um, me in particular, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you ever want to see Brandon's face glow, just go look at the pictures of the people he... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the first night we went there, the first thing we... One of the first things we did was... I wanted to get Diane Franklin's autograph on my Blu-ray of Terror Vision. Uh. I don't know why these guys are groaning. But anyway, I was She's working. a very nice person. Very nice person. It's yeah. a terrible movie. That's why I'm groaning. It is a very bad movie, but at least she's a very nice person. And she's done good movies, just, you know. Not that one. Yeah. She was good in it, but again, the movie itself is just... She was excited about it. I, I'm sure it was a fun set to be on. <laughs> Um, look, that that movie is fun to do, but everything else after that is like. Mm. It looked like a fucking Cindy Lauper music video. Yeah. That whole movie. Yeah. Have I shown you the Good Bad Flicks episode about it yet? No, not yet. But you, you should. It's uh, later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to get my Blu-ray copy of it signed. I was wearing my Terrorvision T-shirt, which, if you looked at the set photos for Living Nightmares episode three, you saw me wearing it and one of the pictures um so i went up to her table and the first night there weren't that many people there uh there were two people in front of me one of them was getting a bill and ted poster signed by her uh, since she was one of the princesses in that movie of course uh the person ahead of me was getting one of the amityville horror movies that she was in signed and then i went up to her and i got my blu-ray signed she was very excited she talked about how fun the set was like i said fun set to be on and then she saw my terror vision shirt and her eyes just lit up she got so excited and she said do you want me to sign your shirt and i was like um and from that moment on he was speechless i I didn't know what to say she said i'll sign your shirt for free i love that shirt Um, and so, yeah, after she was done signing my Blu-ray, she signed my shirt across the chest. It wasn't like a little signature, it's she signed her name across my entire chest. Like Van Halen used to do with the groupies. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly what happens. (laughs) You think that's an insult to me, but it is an insult. No, 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 it's not. Take it how you you want. I wouldn't say that's an insult, that's just very entertaining. And accurate. I, that, that is probably the most starstruck I've ever been in my life. I can see it. Okay. I, I, I mean, I can see it in the photo. I, I, I everything was so in, happy. Everything in that photo says, every, you don't even need to tell the story. It'll <laughs> tell you everything that you need to know about what's going on. And that, when, it, when they really say a picture says a thousand words, it, that, that one's picture, worth like a million. That really tells you exactly what the hell was going on in that picture. Again, the you, smile on it. Me and David, we were standing there watching this happen, and we're just like, oh, Jesus, we're going to have to hog time and... No, no, you can't stay. Bre- Brendan, we have things to do. No, no, come here, come here, boy. We have to go home, Brendan. <laughs> what? What? Either really angry or he has to fart. 
I have the urge <laughs> to place metal in your face. <laughs> anyway, moving on. But yeah, but that's not as creepy as one of the stories she told me. As like one of the last stories she told me was there was a guy at one of the previous conventions. He wanted her to sign his actual body. And then he got her signature tattoo done. That is dedication. Dude, that is... I don't, that, I don't know whether I'd be... Like... It, like, cool? Or just... Cool? <laughs> or cool. <Yeah. laughs> I'd probably be like... Oh, okay, this is strange for me, but fuck... Well, dude, think about how hardcore horror fans are. Yeah. You know what? Fair enough. Um, Craig yeah, Sheffer yeah. was there from Nightbreed. I got his autograph, my Nightbreed Blu-ray. PJ Souls from Halloween and of Carrie. Course. Of course. Uh, got her to sign my Carrie Blu-ray. And Rock and Roll High School. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, she was very nice. Like, David sure. was there with me, and I got a picture with her, and then she just went to David and was like, do you want to be in the picture, too? And David was like... Sure, why not? So he kind of got a that's free hip, picture with her. That's happened a couple times. A couple times. That happened to me with um, uh, um, with uh, uh, Danny Trejo. Okay. Um, uh, Wait, Danny, really? Yeah, Danny Trejo. The, Where did well, you meet Danny Trejo? At at the um, the 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 festival that we're gonna go, uh, go to. The uh, the con that we're gonna go to. Wait, Day, Day of the Dead? Dead? Day of the Dead. Yeah, he was at Day of the Dead. Um, and this was a couple years back. It was actually a really funny story. I was there with uh, with with a girl um friend of mine at the time. And and I actually wanted a picture with him, so I took the picture with him and everything else. And he's like a major flirt and everything else. And she actually took the picture, and he's and, and it, uh, we're gonna leave. And she's she's like, oh, it was nice to meet. She's like, do you want a picture? And she's she's like, yeah. It's like, come on in here. And then he grabbed her, probably like like take the picture, uh, Miguel, take the picture, and then took the picture. Huge fucking flirt, but super nice guy. Very yeah. takes the time. Thank you so much for coming out. We appreciate you, but really really fun guy. Um, I told him how much I love from Dust Till Dawn, and he said that's cool. Um, and then that was the end of the story. But he, but yeah, I've had that. I've seen that happen a couple times. Yep. I have his first movie, really, Runaway Train with John Voight and Eric Roberts. Oh my god, 1985. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. If I ever meet him, I just want to shake his hand and just tell him thank you for giving me what is arguably one of the most creative and funniest kills I've ever seen in a movie. Machete. Yep. Which one? Uh, the window scene. Ah. Just grabs a guy's intestines. I knew exactly run, which one he was. Jumps out the window. And go, I'm like, this is genius. <laughs> this is the most entertaining thing I've seen all year. Why is this not getting awards? Yeah. I was so upset there was an award for the most creative and awesome kill in a movie. Because that was it. That's why I, m I miss Spike TV. Because Spike TV had the, had the Man Awards and they also had the Scream Awards. Yeah. Which uh, the Scream Awards were great. The Scream Awards would do something like that, like most creative kill, you know, the greatest final girl, you know. I've only seen that kill get appreciation on like one video. It's so upsetting. <laughs> that is upsetting. Anyway, back to the con. Uh, then day two, um, yeah, day two was PJ Souls, uh, David. Got his picture with a couple wrestlers. Lurch from the Adams family. Nice. I got a picture with the Soska sisters, who are probably most famous for writing and directing American Mary. Mm. Um, those pictures are also on Instagram, and those pictures are also worth at least a thousand words oh, each. Oh, so much. So much. Our buddy's just like, I don't think I've ever seen Brandon smile so hardcore in his life. No, Holy no, what, shit. no, if you're gonna quote our friend, you're gonna quote him right. He has a he has a picture of two attractive twins on his shoulders. Of course he's gonna be fucking happy. <laughs> Am I wrong? As he no. looks for the photo. Well, I'm looking for our friend's quote, Zachary. Don't ever use my full name again. I will murder you. <laughs> Those are the most beaming, genuine Brandon smiles I think I've ever seen. Yeah, they're pretty great. He's not wrong. No, he is not. Um, he was super happy. Then there was Mick Strawn. Great dude. Yeah, uh, signed a couple copies of his book for myself and David. Had so many stories to tell us, um, but we'll save those for another time. I was going to say, I would save those if he wants yeah. to tell. That, those are his stories. Yeah, they're his stories. They're, they're phenomenal no, stories. They're phenomenal stories. They're worth repeating, but nobody can tell them like Mick. Yeah. So if you go to a horror con, see if Mick Strawn is there. If Mick is there visit his table, ask him to tell you a story. He has so many stories. 
Uh, he's probably best known for being the production designer of Nightmare on Elm Street 4, which the book that he has is all about the making of Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Can't wait to read it. Um, yeah, great, great man. Uh, and a film of his was also showing at the film festival there, Friday the 13th Vengeance, which is a fan film that takes place... It's a... It, it, it's basically what the director of Friday 6 would have done had he been allowed to continue with the series. Yes, and it, I would say that the, the tagline is it's more than a fan film, and that is absolutely 100% true. Sure. That movie was grade A quality. Yeah. Like, I I would even, if if we were going on an official list and it was an official movie, I would put that in my top three Friday movies. It's Top three or top there. four. It's up there. Yeah, absolutely within my top five, but more There or less. are some brutal kills. There are some times where I was afraid to blink because I didn't want to miss any kills. <laughs> that like, movie there... does not hold back, and no. I love it. It doesn't hold back in any way. No, it oh. is great. And then Jason Brooks was there, who played Jason in that movie. He was a really nice guy. Uh, signed posters for both me and Zach. Took pictures with us, and you can see those on the Instagram. And in my picture specifically with him, right behind us, you can see Rob Mello of Happy, Happy Death, Death Day. Day and Happy Death Day 2 <laughs> kind of photobombing us. I really wish. I I really want them to release a dual pack finally so I could just buy the movies. And next time I see them at a convention, I, I'd, I if I had the movies, I would have loved to have yeah. had them sign them because those movies are fan-fucking-tastic. If you haven't they're, seen they're them, watch time. them. They're great. They're a fun time. Um... And then, of course, we had the film festival, which we checked out a couple shorts. Um, we actually networked with a few filmmakers that we hope to have on this podcast pretty soon. Um, one of the movies we checked out, and actually um, he sent us a copy of it after the fact, but we watched the best feature winner of the film festival, which is called Lilith. Yeah. Um, we hope to have the filmmaker behind that on our podcast to talk about the film. But it's a really good time. Uh, I'll leave it at that for right now. I'd rather wait till we have him on here to so go into detail. It. Yeah, it is. A, it is a good movie. But definitely try to seek it out if you're in the New Jersey, New York area, East Coast area. Hopefully, there are more screenings of it in the near future. He's doing another screening, I believe, this weekend or next week. Yeah, weekend actually, let, let, let me give him a little plug for his Instagram so you can follow it because if. If you want information on the movie, you might as well go to the source. There you go. And of course, Brandon will put a link in the description below. Lilith the film. And that's Lilith and that's Lilith spelled L I L L I T H. Lilith the film and that's on Instagram link below. Just making more work for me. <laughs> yeah. Um say so yeah, I think that's all the major points for New Jersey right now. Anything else you want to cover before we move on? Uh, VHSs are going to make a comeback. Yeah, there are a lot of VHSs for sale there. That makes me happy. Um, we're, of course, here at Dark History. Uh, this is the first night. There's one more day tomorrow. Uh, definitely talked to a few interesting people today. Um, do you want to talk... Zach, why don't you take over for this one? Because okay. I think you're the most excited about <laughs> one of the guests we spoke to tonight. So we met um, one of the actors from uh, Predator 2. It wasn't uh, Kevin Peter Hall who played the Predator, but he was one of the Predators at the, the end Boar of the movie. Predator. Yes, the Boar Predator specifically. Um, Which he said he was the shortest Predator on that set. And he stands six foot one. Six foot one, and he's pretty bulky too. And he and was the shortest. He was the smallest. He said the smallest. one to the family. Essentially. Yeah, he was yeah. pretty great. Um, uh, yeah, he was a really really nice guy. And he was also on an episode of Star Trek. Um, next generation. With next, next gen, which is pretty cool. Um, I actually got to talk to his um, uh, his uh, the assistant person that was there. Also, the person who helps with his distribution company. Um, who was really, really awesome, who we actually want to have on as a separate guest um, at some point. Uh, she, her and I got in a great conversation about just the business side of, uh, of this industry. Um, unfortunately, the, a little bit of the nastiness and, you know, unfortunate characters that we run into. But also, you know, the reason why we got into it, you know, she actually, did, uh, just a little bit of history, she actually 
uh, started a distribution company because of a very poor experience with a distribution company for one of their films. Um, uh, you know, obviously, I won't go too much into the detail of the story because I want her the give her the opportunity to say it when she's on our podcast as a guest. Um, hopefully, that does work itself out. But um, yeah, she she was fantastic. Um, these two guys I actually talked with uh, with him for a Wyatt while. himself. Wyatt yeah. himself, and then I talked with uh, Gail. Um, uh, you know, for a long time. We I think we were there for at least an hour chatting. We almost it was missed. about half hour forty five minutes because I okay. remember when we first it was about a half hour because when we got when we started talking to them we were about a half hour away from our screening and then I looked at the and watch and I'm like oh shit we had like only a couple minutes left by the time we left there yeah yeah the um uh, but yeah we had a really great conversation with her I actually met a um upstairs met a, a wonderful a lady who does uh, horror short stories. Um, author. author, sorry. Um, uh, we, uh, we had a, another great conversation uh, talking about um, uh, just uh, publishing for books and things like that. And then also she helps out with a, uh, an animated series. So I'm actually very excited to, to talk with her about future opportunities and future connections, which is pretty cool. Um, and overall, everybody was nice. Uh, the dude from uh, um, uh, from Ocean's Eleven was—I didn't get to meet him, but the the, the uh, bigger bigger guy from Ocean's Eleven that uh, George he was Clinton the was stunt. Him. He was Leatherface's stunt man for Tex Chainsaw Master Two. Two, but yeah, it was it was. He should be there tomorrow, so we should be. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll probably check him out. Still like a whole other day to do, yeah. which is crazy. Um, but it's yeah, so crazy. I, it's crazy. Uh, but ultimately, it was a really, really good experience. Um, it makes me disappointed that I wasn't there in New Jersey. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it, 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 it's it's upsetting that that was the case. It's very small, but it's very intimate, yeah. which yeah. I liked. Um, there are two other guests that we spoke with, but I think I'd rather wait to hold, hold off on those stories until we have a little more time, because um, those are a bit longer stories, and... I think we I think we should be able to devote more of a segment to them before well, we course. tell them. But there are two notable guests that we also spoke to um, that I hope we talk about in the very near future. Yeah, yes. absolutely. The um, and then we got to finally have our screening, and um, and I think the one thing that I, I want to talk about too because I think this is important is that it's it's our one year anniversary, guys. Tomorrow, Tomorrow. we are recording this the night of October 26th. Tomorrow is October 27th. Obviously, when this goes up, it'll be at least a week or two after. It'll probably be either the 28th or the 29th that this goes up. Yeah, I'm, yeah. but anyway, it's tomorrow, October 27th, will be the one year anniversary from when three of us wow. finally said, we need to make something. And yep. we did. The um, that I, was Snapchat nightmare. It wasn't even living nightmare. No, it was, it was Snapchat nightmare. It, it, yes, it was. It started off as a, you know what? Let's fucking do this. We're, yeah, we, was, we've we had this. We had, had this thing around. narrative in a really long time. It's, the last narrative thing the three of us did together was my senior, the second part to my senior film. That was the last narrative I did in general. Yeah. Before that. I had worked on a few pieces um, here and there, but like it was never anything big. Like again, the last big thing that we all did, and especially together, was my senior film, and that was like September of 2016. I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. September of 2016, and then it's just like he's finally off the ship, and we're all back together, and things just are kind of just met. Things were kind of. Stagnant yeah. and frustrating, and do all the above. We were just putting too much faith into too many other people, and finally we just said we got to do something ourselves. And I'm actually amazed at what this last year has brought us. It's it's insane. I mean, you know, like like it, it's a cliche when they say you just go out and make something, but it's <laughs> if, if, it's if the absolute yeah. truth. Because because the crazy part about all this is that it evolved into something. Um, that we didn't expect. I mean, it's as Brandon was saying, it started out as just you know, or Zach was saying, it just started out as a short, you know, yeah. and then and then it was we, supposed to be one and done, one and done, and then all of a sudden we realized, oh wait a minute, this could be a series, and then we realized, oh, we don't want our YouTube page to only have a video every once every couple months, months. so let's make let's, more let's content. Do, let's do a podcast. Let's do and then and then and then it was let's do a review. Yeah. Then let's do interviews. Then let's do another show. That we're still working and on. Now it's the Midwest That's Horror Network. Still working on the organization, yeah. but it's yeah. coming together. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's really amazing, and that's why you know people ask me, you know, with summer being over, like, what did you do over the summer? 
I worked. They, um, uh, and and I worked a, a heard during my, during my day job, and then I was over at their fucking house at night. The I was out there almost every night. The um, doing something, planning we were, something, working something, doing a podcast, doing a review, doing something. The um, and you know what? And I would not change it for anything. Yeah, we've been working at this for, like I said, almost a year now. A year tomorrow, and then things really started picking up in August when we actually started going out and networking with people. Like we went to our first convention, Flashback Weekend, which was which great. You all know how that went because we yeah. had two interviews up on the website already. And James in October in. Games, and it, it, and, again, and, uh, if you haven't coming up. if you haven't checked out um, October Games, how how yeah horror, horror legends. Thank you. Uh, they released the release it yeah released their recent update with the werewolf legend. And he is I, awesome. I Plays really, very similar to the Xenomorph, if you're familiar with Alien vs. Predator. Only I, difference, he doesn't crawl on walls, but I, he's still vicious. I've not had a chance to play that yet. Because the night that you were playing it was the night where I was uploading footage for a job, so I couldn't use my computer for gaming. But I'm really oh. excited to try it out. Priorities, Brandon. Oh. I do got to still make money somehow. I know. The, uh, and then, of course, we have you know uh, the, our interview with Tony Wash coming up very, very soon. Which we're very excited about. I mean, I'm very excited about it. I know these guys are too, but... It, it's you know, a really good interview. It's a great interview. That and one will be coming up very soon. It, which is insane for me because, you know, I've known Tony for a decade. Um, uh, was he your very first, like, film? Or? No, 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 no. I did other things, you know, other, okay. other things before. I did things in high school and, you know, in, the, yeah, in college and everything else. But that was one of the first big sets yeah. I was ever on. Yeah, that was like 2010, right? That was 2010, yes. Yeah, um, uh, yeah that was one of the first big sets I was ever on and it's crazy that things have come that even more full circle for me um, but yeah I, I can't believe that it's it's been a year since we were I mean we were at the Emporium um, uh, at a Halloween party playing fucking um, uh, um, we were at, uh, at headquarters. Headquarters. headquarters we're at headquarters okay. we're at headquarters by the way awesome place to go uh, on Halloween holy shit um, a lot of costumes there um, but it, we were just sitting around and, and we were all chatting about, you know, exactly what we just talked about, playing pinball. And we when said, we got home, when we got back to our apartment, that's when we had the serious talk. Yeah, we, I mean, there was because a... Because I yeah. was going through some stuff at that time, you were going through some stuff, Zach was, like, we were all going through yeah. stuff. And it really just all just stemmed from our frustrations of, we are not doing what we want to do. And so that's the night yeah. we decided we got to start doing what we want to do. And I think all three of us, despite all the challenges we've had so far, I think this year has been the happiest year that any of us have had in a really long time. It's one of those things yeah. where it's we have pretty much all the tools necessary. We have post-production, everything related, everything production related, business. I'm Mark uh, Conway and I sell sales. <laughs> no dog, I sell sales with your sales with your sales. <laughs> like we... We had all the pieces, it, like all the other stuff, it's just like, it's going to be tricky, but like the basic things that everybody needs to get started that everybody complains about, I don't know how to edit, I don't know, how to, I don't have the equipment, just all that stuff, it's like, we have it, why the fuck aren't we doing anything? Well, yeah, that's, that was really stupid. That was a really big thing where it's just like, we have everything we need, we have the most important, hardcore stuff that we need that everybody would kill for, let's do something with it. Yeah, yeah. We literally have a bunch of people with a tremendous amount of talent just fucking sitting around. You know, with doing nothing, like you know, wasting away. I mean, our entire crew and cast. You know, obviously cast we auditioned, but in our, especially our crew. You know, just sitting around, not doing you know much. They're just waiting for the next fucking job, and you know, we took it upon ourselves to, to bring those people back. And we, for the most part, we invited back almost everybody from the same cast. And we've been yeah. lucky to the schedules lined up. Crew. So, I'm sorry, crew. Sorry. Oh um, my, I've been doing that all tonight. It's, um, it's the, they're all people that I've been wanting to work with and I'm glad that I've yeah. gotten to work with them either on one, two, or all three of the episodes we've done so far. Which is crazy um, too because it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of people from your senior, yeah. Zach. Um, Essentially everybody from my senior. It's with the exception of like Wes and Victor mainly um, because Wes had scheduling conflicts. And yeah. then I, just, um, yeah. I do want to do an episode devoted to the making of episode three but 
since we added David, since episode two, we added David as a fourth executive producer, and he, this, that was his first episode as an EP. I feel he should be on Absolutely. this podcast Correct. before we go into the making of it, but in honor of our one year anniversary, I do want to give a special shout out to our assistant director on that episode, who was also the AD for episode one, Marcus Foreman, because yes. I think he had something very encouraging to say to us, and... Um, Zach, I I think you in particular really liked what he had to say. Would you like to say it or do you want me to say it? I don't remember it word for word, but essentially what it was, it's, it's like he saw where we started and hmm. the amount of progression and just the amount we've upgraded since we started this whole project and hell, since we've started our like filming careers, essentially, it's like it's gone up exponentially. We prepare ten times harder than we did for episode one. We put as much time and effort as needed like we actually went through proper rehearsals and everything like that we for had rehearsals three. we had camera tests we still could have had more time like it's oh, there's time. and i'll go into the more detail of this when we do talk about episode three in more detail but there was one lighting issue that we, we had a solution for it um, and it was a very good solution, but I feel like we could have had something just a little better had we had a bit more time. But I am extremely happy with how we handled it. Yeah. Either way, it was one of those compliments that just it made me feel like I was on the right path and I wasn't fucking up and, you know, using people like horribly. Like, I, I felt like I was appreciated. I appreciate my cast. I appreciate my crew. I appreciate everybody who helps for these projects because we, we can't afford to pay people right now. So no, we can't. Everybody's doing this because they want to. At least that's what I believe. And actually, and I just came up with a really good idea um, right on the spot. Since this is we're already celebrating our one year anniversary tomorrow and everything else. Of course, I would have loved to have David here, but I do want to do this now, and we can always add in later. But let's let's do a a, a few shout outs. Like, you yeah. just did Marcus and everything else, but Zach, you know, let's talk about some people that, that really made this year happen and everything else. You know, some people that you're like, you know what, fuck, I, we wouldn't be sitting here on this couch without those people's help. I think this is an excellent opportunity to do that. Well, um, I guess right off the top of my head, uh, Matt and Galia are two actors for the first episode. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I gotta give a special thank you to them. Big G! <laughs> Big G, Galea. And especially to Matt, you know, um, for our first audition, we didn't know about the annoyance theater where we held our <laughs> current audition, so like a couple of assholes, we set it up at our apartment, which Ooh. going into that, I immediately Don't knew do we're that. just like, don't this is gonna look so fucking weird. Shady. Super it's cast, like, it's like cast a couch kind of creepy. Yeah, it's just <laughs> like, all right, and we're Ooh. asking for Essentially teenagers, so... No, people it, who look like teenagers. People who look like teenagers, but still, it's just like... Yeah, Thank I... Thank God, we already had the female lead oh, cast. Oh, Thank no. God. God. That, we, ne we wouldn't have got... We would have got no shows for no, that No, nobody. I who? guarantee it. Yeah, so it's like, thank God we had Gollum. And the ones, who had, did, and the ones who would have showed, we wouldn't have wanted. Uh, <laughs> we would never say never, but who yeah. knows. Um, but yeah, we had three people show up that day. All really great, but Matt, he... He did a phenomenal job with the uh, audition, and he did a phenomenal job in the actual execution and performance of episode one. So, Matt, I don't know what you're doing now. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. And if you're watching this, you're awesome. So, thank you, thank uh, you. That's yeah. that. Yeah. That's, so, who else you got? Oh, and Galia. Just oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, she's she's doing awesome things right uh, now. Too. She is. Yeah. Shout she out is. to Wes. Yeah, big Wes. For, um, the little Krillo. A lot of reasons uh, for episode one. He helped spot a lot of things that needed to be cleaned up oh in the my edit. God. Uh, for episode two, he basically gave us a bathroom for the filming of he's, episode he's, two. He's the fucking Batman of scripties. <laughs> Like the, the one we don't want, but the one we deserve. <laughs> Wait, what? If you want anybody to spot errors in your film, whether it be on set, pre or post, he is the one person who'll be like, "Wait he a minute, will spot it, dude, dude, dude." But just be it prepared. How you could li like a molecule in the air could change. It's like, is that hydrogen? <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh, that's a, don't, you, you know what, if you hire him as a scripty, don't prepare to do anything fast. He's the only one who could drive James Cameron and Stanley get just completely insane with continuity. Although, although Kubrick would have loved him. My child. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would have been, my child. 
Well, if Cooper wants to strangle you, oh, yeah. you... It would have been, my child, don't talk to Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even get through that with a straight face. Oh, oh man. <laughs> God. Anyway, damn. Oh, wow, weird. Shelley Duvall is a good actress. She did not deserve what happened to no, her. And then she did Popeye, and then she disappeared. She was also in Nashville, I believe. <sighs> was she? Yeah. Okay. What's in Nashville? Anyway. Nashville's a, it was up against Jaws and Gwen Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and Barry Lyndon, which was also a Kubrick movie. Dog Day Afternoon was the fifth movie nominee. Wow. Like all, that was one of those years where all five of the Best Picture nominees were... Any one of them could have won, and I'd be happy. Anything that went up against Jaws, I am so sorry. It's political choice. Anyway, <laughs> but, you know, hey, um, uh, go ahead and, uh, Zach, anybody else that you were thinking of? Um, there's a lot. There are a lot. There's a like, lot. Uh, I have a few. All right, I'm going to eat All right, wait, um, again, because it's like they, they actors, all deserve shot at shout act, outs. Hell, actors for episode two, Jonathan, yeah. Durston, Jonathan, Isaiah. Isaiah. Um, oh, man, again, thank you. You're, you're, just every actor who's been in these episodes so far. There has not been one performance that I have been disappointed with. Everybody was great on set. Everybody's wanted to go above and beyond. Yes, and it's just been a fantastic time. Um, again, I appreciate every single one of you who has been on, and thank you for all the support. I've seen that you've been following a lot of the updates on the Facebook and Instagram. We appreciate we that really you're appreciate sticking with that. the channel thank and everything you. like that. So. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to do, uh, um, we'll just do Spitfire. You think of something. Um, me okay, and just um, jump in. Antonisha. Oh, oh yeah. Big Antonisha, thank, 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 thank you so much for everything. Yeah, Antonisha. We appreciate you so much. She is such a phenomenal special effects makeup artist. If you need somebody who does, honestly, I'm pretty sure she can do whatever the hell you want. You just got to give her the time and the budget to do it. Yeah. Antonisha Stokes. She's local to Chicago. Please. Anybody who needs her, like, Talk to her, and my, sister, um, and my sister Lexi for uh, for helping out on episode one as well. That too, yeah. We really, really appreciate you, uh, Mark's Victor sister, for being an excellent grip and gaffer. Oh, yeah. um, he's also helped me out with a lot of other gigs outside of Midwest Horror Network. Um, he is one of those people that really knows his stuff. Uh, I'm really happy to have him on his on our crew. Um, if he ever gives you a piece of advice, listen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't say he, he doesn't always give advice, but when he does, you better you yeah. Better fucking pay he's a you. smart man. Listen to him. He yeah. knows what the fuck he's doing. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Hunter and Colin for sound. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. thank you so much for that. Thank you so. Um, so both do phenomenal that. sound jobs. Yeah. I know. Oh. I know Colin made like he, he actually like he does sound in his profession. If you need a great quality sound guy, oh, Colin, what's true. his last name? I, Linehan. I do not know how to pronounce yeah, his yeah, last yeah. name. He's in the credits of episode two. He's a phenomenal sound guy. He knows his shit. Linehan. Yeah. Linehan. I had it right the first time. The uh, and also too big shout out to uh, uh, to Papa Conway yeah. and uh, and Sarah Boomer. Um, for all of your tremendous support, um, uh, and especially making the uh, episode one happen, um, and allowing us, and then also, and, and it's going back even further, <laughs> you know, uh, the last film we all worked, yeah, we all worked on was, was, was also uh, possible because of my father too. His father's a very huge lifesaver, um, at least in uh, it, when it comes to my films, he saved my ass. You know what? Twice that, that dinner, <laughs> that dinner the night before was more expensive than the whole fucking budget for the whole episode one, then, but worth it. Worth it. Way premium experience. I, I'd do it again. We still crack the Willy Wonka jokes. If I ever have to bribe him again, I'm, we're doing that way. Sarah and I still crack the uh, the Willy Wonka jokes all the time. We literally did it the other night. Um, uh, but uh, Brandon's got some. I just got a few last ones. I got, I got uh, one more. I got one more after you, though. Okay, I've, got, I've got a few. Uh, first off, Katie, our AD for episode two. Yes, yes uh, that Katie, was shot so much. over a holiday weekend, so we weren't able to get a lot of people that we wanted to return. Because but, we all were just like, oh yeah, this is the last weekend we're essentially free you know, before he go, flies off still somewhere. Still and, going through school, and, 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 and also you wouldn't yeah. think it. Yeah, you would not think of total professional. The one thing I'm going to say was. 
she jumped right in and being in a in a with the exception of Colin being in an environment where everyone knows everyone. Yeah. Like there was, you know, we we all knew each other, we all had a camaraderie, we've all hung Her out. You and me bonded in the uh, car ride I mean, location over laser discs in the nineteen sixty eight version of the blob. And then, and then oh, of course and that oh, was night number one and then night number two while we were waiting for everybody to show up, we were watching the Goosebumps movie <laughs> where the cop is talking about, about the blob fifty eight blob on laser disc. I did not plan that by the way. No, I know you did. But you know what though it, but it, she jumped right in. Yeah. Now being in a situation where she's the pretty much the youngest person in the entire group. She was she was, she was my, a full decade younger than me. It, I believe insane. she was either a year older or the same age as my sisters. Yes, which yeah. m blew me away. I'm just like she was a full decade younger than me. Yeah, I know that much. I'm just like I'm working with somebody the same age as my sisters. They're like 19 right now or eight. I don't fucking. Well, the, 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 I mean, it, it, she jumps right in full force. Yeah. And, and you know we all you know cracked our jokes. She just you know la laughed and and sometimes she would spit it back too. Which oh was, yeah, which is really cool. I, my, my favorite my favorite thing. Yeah 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> just, what what <laughs> what the, what now? Very awesome, very awesome person. Oh, very, very awesome great. person. Uh, yeah, um, and then another shout out to she was only able to help us out with the first night of Living Nightmares Three, but Jill, yes, uh, yes excellent yes. camera operator and AC. I've uh, worked with her on set. This is, I think, the third set that she's been in AC came out for me. Yeah, she's been pension party favors. That first night of Living Nightmares Three, yeah. very good at what she does. She was essentially my one of my main go-to camera operators when I was still in school. She's great, knows her shit, and phenomenal to work with. And just a great person, great yeah. human being. The um uh, the you know I um uh, the I think it's super important too is um, I want to give a big shout out to uh, to the one person, one of the very few people outside of the the normal core group that constantly shares all of our shit all the time that isn't an executive producer it would be Sarah Tukowski yes. my, 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 my lovely lovely girlfriend who constantly is pimping out our shit all the time I'm sensing a little bias towards her for me uh, maybe a little bit <laughs> maybe a little bit but you know what though when I call like I see it and she is always sharing all of our stuff on social media um, she's always watching and she's always telling everybody about it. She wrote a lovely, lovely message on Facebook um, tonight. About, tonight about our one year anniversary. Um, uh, love you, babe. Um, uh, and then also too, the last thing I, I will say too is, and, I, and, and this is the, the bedrock to everything, it's the place that the buck stops and everything else, is it the gentlemen that, that are on the couch right now and then also the gentleman that is not here and everything else. This would not be possible um, without these uh, without these two guys and David um, any other way. Which There's... I do want to circle back to that in a mm -hmm. minute. Um, also, a thank you to the Chicago Film Office. Episodes uh, two and three would not have been able to be two. things had they not been there to answer our questions. Miss Crouch, thank you so much for dealing with my bullshit. I was going to say, you. yeah, this guy yeah, specifically. I appreciate you dealing with me. They, um, I really do. Yeah. Um, um, we're we're an interesting group of people to work with, apparently. Yes, we are. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, to circle back, I and mean, it's like, shout out to David, also the two of you. I don't want to sound self congratulatory, but we did talk to someone at the convention tonight who he, he said that when you go into business with somebody, they say when you're married, don't go to bed angry. It's the same thing with when you're in business. And it's like before yeah. you end a night, ask each other, are you all good? Are you good? Mm -hmm. Are you good? Are you good? We've all had our, cha our personal challenges this past year. Cool. Um, and I I'm extremely happy that I've gone through this journey with the two of you. Absolutely. And then later on, of course, adding David. Um, but it's we're all making sure all of us are okay. We're making sure, like, we're not just business partners, but we're friends as well. Yeah. And this is actually the first time in my professional life that I've felt actually part of something good. And so I do thank you, too, for that. Of course. Of course. The, um... Uh, Squirrels. <laughs> uh, Zach doesn't like to get sentimental. Uh, as we, we discussed earlier, his, his idea of a sentimental movie is apparently Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> That happened earlier today. That did happen. That conversation happened before we hit the road. Yeah. Such a we are extremely tired, by the way, because yeah. we spent three hours. We got up early, spent three hours on the road, 
at a convention or doing a podcast, and then tomorrow we're doing the convention again and driving back to Chicago, yeah. to Chicago for three hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but um, the um, uh, the one thing I, I, I didn't want to say though is um, I, again, big shout out to David who is not here. Um, I wish he was. Um, uh, we all know, do. Hey, we all do. But the it, four of us are going to be at a convention together at some point. We, it will happen. Sometime. One of these days, God only knows. What, hopefully, Days of the Dead convention. You know what though? I, I I will say this too, and this is the biggest compliment I can give. When it was time to add on a fourth producer, this is one of the easiest fucking decisions I've ever made in my life. Yeah. yeah. The um, there wasn't even a, a yeah yeah yeah. That's great. Let's do that. Yeah. Well, um, I don't remember which of us said, "Do you want to add David as an EP?" And who the, the other. Th- the other two of us were just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah that sounds awesome. The uh, let's do that. The uh, it was it was a, an incredibly easy decision. Yeah. Um, uh, I've I, I've known him as long as I've known the two of you, and it was incredibly incredibly easy. Um, uh, the um, yeah, and I have been friends with Zach since I auditioned for him. Um, uh, it turns out that we had a shit ton in common. Um, uh, after I auditioned for him, um, uh, which has never happened with another director. Um, uh, we ended up workshopping a, a few scripts together. We would hang out uh, periodically when I still lived in Ukrainian Village. Um, uh, we did a couple other films. We always knew that it was a good idea to, to work together and to mm-hmm. stay in contact. Um, uh, the, um, and we continued to stay in contact. You know, we, got, we went through the same paces, same struggles with a lot of different things going on in our lives. There were a lot of similar things going on lives so same circles and um, uh, same squirrels same squirrels we have the same with same demented sense of humor um, uh, we I have would a, say mine's a little bit more demented but just a little bit usually just a little bloodier that's the only difference giggity um, uh, and the um, and it was one of the easiest decisions being involved in, in, in business with them um, it's an easy friendship um, uh, it's it, it, that requires zero ego whatsoever because uh, we're both awesome. Um, uh, the uh, Zero ego, you said. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, and, and zero when it's equaled out. And I consider him one of my best friends. Um, Absolutely. Uh, and it's it was a really easy decision. Um, and then um, and then in, in, in turn of a conversation that him and I would have a lot was when the fuck was Brandon getting off the ship? When was Brandon getting off the ship? When is Brandon getting off the goddamn cruise boat? The, um, uh, because that's another person that the moment I met him and him and I got in a conversation up on my dad's um, uh, patio about the, the Woodstock film mm-hmm. that he was doing at the time, we were writing at the time, and us talking about film in a very, very critical way. And, and, I, and I think I even told him, I was like, you know what? I like you. <laughs> oh, God. You also gave me some advice on that porch as well. Did I hope it was good? Yes, uh, and what it was is that there is somebody who originally tried to get me as an editor for a film, disappeared for a while, and all. Because uh, like I was actually on that was back when I worked at Target night shift. I remember not this just, story. Not just working Target, but working Target night shift. But I was on vacation at the time, for like two or three weeks. Okay, it was literally the and, final days of your vacation. Yeah, and that's I actually why I was, That's why I was able to help you out. Um. But yeah, so it was like, I was originally supposed to have that footage like at the, a little before my vacation started. Oh yeah? Um, and the idea, and pretty much it was I was gonna be working on it during vacation. Mm-hmm. And he just like disappears and all of a sudden it's just like, Brandon, the editor I got instead of you backed out or something like that. It's, can you do this? And it's like, he had a few other demands as well, requirements, I should say, for the edit. And it was all stuff that it's like, with the time frame he was trying to get it done, I would have literally had to take another two weeks off work and give up sleep for those two weeks. Um, would like, be literally impossible. Yeah, like, it's. I think I told you what the requirements he had, too. And you told me a little bit afterwards, like, I forgot what the hell we were doing or saying, but, yeah. It was, it, there, there's no, it's, and I, I even told you, I'm like, there's no fucking there, there's way There's no way it could have been done. Like, yeah. the, the way he said he needed it to be done, and in the time frame he needed it to be done, there was no way. Like, literally, um, I, it's no joke if he wanted that from really anybody. Any professional would have charged at least a couple thousand 
for for and it's all because of the rush part of it. Uh, of um, the rush like, is what kills everything. Yeah, the rush is what kills everything. But I don't want to get sidetracked too much on the logistics of that. But essentially, your advice was. You can tell them an emergency on your part doesn't constitute an emergency on my part. All right, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I did eventually see the trailer, and, and it's like, what really sealed the deal for me for not taking it was I had to agree to do it before I saw the footage. And that's <laughs> no. never... It's, it's, okay, so we're not really doing a whole... Here's the flag, it is red. So, we're, so this is kind of a special episode where we're just kind of doing general recaps and we're going to talk about a few yeah. movies we've watched. So we're not really going to go into our filmmaking education segment this episode. You'll get a little tidbits. But, but if, well, you go, if, 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 you, if you want some advice, especially if you're in post-production, I'm sure Zach will back me up. Uh, this is back when I was trying to be an editor to give you an idea of how long ago this was. I still, I was can, not I a still cannot see you as a post-production guy. It's so fucking weird. I know, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's if somebody you you should be allowed to see the footage before you edit it because you want to make sure you're going to be part of something that you want your name to be a part of. If somebody says you can't see the footage until you agree to edit it, that is a red flag. Yeah, Just want to say on a side note: not only do you want to see if it's like the proper quality that you want to do, you need to make sure that you can actually edit something out of that. Yeah. That, you that's that's even edit. the biggest one. It's like, can you even edit something out of this? Do they have the this? coverage they need to get what they want? Do you have the coverage? Do you have the audio? Do you have everything prepped? Hey, you know, Zach, what was, what was the name of your business that you were going to do? Your editing? Fix My Fuck Up Productions. Because <laughs> that's essentially what I had to do for the most part, but yeah. we've covered all this in yeah. the uh, post-production lesson podcast episode. Where I'm, we can always do an update. Yeah, I mean, still. I, it's, it's, just, it's just recapping the same stuff. I actually over. remember giving you that advice, too. Yeah. The, um, uh, you know, it, it's... Uh, it's crazy that that was almost four years ago. Um, uh, and the last thing I was going to say, too. I'm old now. Yeah, I know shit. Um, uh, the last thing Dave's I only, not here. I'm back to being the oldest of us. That's it's, true. It's, it's funny. Like, it's this was all four years ago, but it's like, holy yeah. shit. I still feel like I just got out of school, like, yesterday. Like, I remember my graduation very vividly, and it's like, all that shit's gone. That was 2016. Dude, I, I still... I, it seems like it was yesterday I was fucking coughing up dust <laughs> from that basement. No, we're still coughing it up. Well, I mean, it's gonna I kill us. We were all dying a couple yeah. years early. Oh, easily. Guy, so. Easily. Um, uh, thanks, Dad, for your basement. Hmm. Oh, um, uh, the, um, uh, but the, the, the last thing I was to say was, you know, it, it started out as a conversation about, you know, piss poor planning from another job and talking about film and talking about the passion to me wondering when the fuck he was going to get off of a damn cruise boat because I knew how, um, how, what a good guy he was and how talented he was. And then, you know, which I all knew and everything else, I but I also didn't know that right after that, right after I got, I got off the fucking boat, um, that him and I would become really good friends. Really good friends. Um, and, and then slowly through business partners becoming one of my best friends. So, you know, these are guys I see, at, you know, almost every day. Drives, drives Sarah nuts. Yeah, you know, yeah. What, what are you doing? I'm, I'm with the boys. The uh, oh, what a fucking check. We need the, him too, you know. <laughs> the uh, what a fucking. He was our first. He was, he was our <laughs> off first. We put the ring on first. Yeah. The, um, well. You don't even go here. <laughs> You're not my dad. <laughs> anyway, Wait, hey, hang on. What? I don't know. You guys took all the. No, I'm else. lost. The uh, <laughs> don't ask questions. Anyway, um, uh, but. It, but again, and then you know, obviously know, knowing David for for that, you know, my metal my metal brother, the um, yeah. talking about and which Zach and I are huge metal fans too. But I, I did chat with David uh, quite a bit about that. Slayer. All right, Zach's I'm not sure about the hotel. The, uh, <laughs> the audio. there's people sleeping. No, that's right. <laughs> the um, uh, but but yeah, this it, it, this is uh, one of the best. Adventures I've gotten a part of in the last in the last four years that I have in my in my entire life. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah I'm gonna commit to that. The um, uh, it, and it was also uh, um, there's a lot of hard things in life. There's a lot of hard you know choices that come up in life. And do you do the soup or the salad? Well, the yeah, salad or the soup? That's fucking difficult. <laughs> Unless you go to Jameson's, then you get both. I was gonna say no. Um, you go for the soup. It, fair enough. Um, <laughs> uh, but. And I know this educational part's not here, but if, if you would all take some advice, there are a lot of hard decisions in life. There are hard shit that comes up. But when something easy comes up, 
and everything else, like becoming friends with people that you have a lot in common with, and then and then starting something awesome with them, that's a real fucking easy decision. Just say yes. Just do it. The um, like, you know, that was one of the pieces of advice we got today, which was you know, just do it. You know, if you want to do something, just go and do it. You'll figure it out eventually. Chris Chris Walken said that in, in inside the actor's studio. He says, you know, it's like you just want to you want to act, just go fucking act. Like you know, like it, same thing. Anybody who wants to build a house, just go build a house. You'll figure it out eventually. The um, you know, it might take you a while, but you fucking figure it out. The um, uh, so do it with 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 people you trust. Do it with people that you want to spend a lot of time with because you will spend a lot of fucking time with them. Um, thank God we like each other. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, and then just have fun. The uh, just have fun, enjoy what you do, um, and put a lot of hard work into it. But don't forget why you did it in the first place because you love it and because you have fun and because you're doing it with your friends. That's pretty awesome, and that's my sentimental piece. Zach, any last words about our one year anniversary? Squirrels. That's not squirrels. That's not squirrels. Um, that's not Slayer either. Um, <laughs> or Predator. Or anything predator noises. Do you want me to go first, then you go. Sure. Um, yeah, it's been an amazing year. Can't wait for year two to begin tomorrow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. If, if Frank Miller were to make a comic about us about this past year, it would be Midwest Horror Network Year One. Yeah, God. <laughs> Yeah, that would, that would be pretty Frank cool. Frank Miller doing a comic about us. That'd be uh, that'd be something. I still owe you six bucks, by the way. Yes, you do. Comic. Yeah, I still need to give it to you. Yeah, I know. Yes, John Carpenter wrote a Joker comic. I still need to read it, but I thumbed through some of the artwork, and it looks amazing. Fair enough. I bought him a copy, too, because he was out of town. There are yes. so many damn comics I need to catch up on. Yeah, there are a lot of horror comics that I have on my Sweet. stack right now that I need to catch up on. Darkness and Witchblade. I miss them so much. You still need to read Come In to Me, by the way. <laughs> Boy, we haven't brought this one up in a while. Oh, wow, I haven't thought about that in a minute. Jesus Christ. All right, which... It still looks, sounds like a porno. It looks like a porno. It sounds so, like a porno. I'm we, pretty sure it is a porno. When we first talked about that, that was when these podcasts were audio only, and I had to describe the cover. At, our, at one of our next episodes, when we talk about horror comics, show the I should cover. finally show the cover. That's a good point. Um, but yeah, th- this has been an amazing year. It's This has been the most productive year, as far as film-wise, has been for me. Um, I'm amazed that in the last year we've completed two shorts, have another one in post-production, have attended three conventions slash festivals, have screened at two of them, have started a podcast, done a few movie reviews, have shot a makeup tutorial show that's in post-production. We have a lot of other scripts that we're trying to get made. Amazing interviews. Interviews. The amount of networking, the amount of people we've met, this has been, this has been an amazing year. It's been an amazing year. It's been an amazing like three to four months. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so with that, let's take a break and then talk about some movies. Yeah. Squirrels. Squirrels. Welcome back, everybody. Before we get into talking about movies, I just remembered three very important shout-outs that we did not say in the first half, and mm. that's Sarah, Laika, and Bob, our cast for Living Nightmares Episode 3. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were definitely going to talk about them in the next episode. Yep. But, I mean, we gave, I think, literally everybody else a shout-out. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I think we covered cat, all cast and crew, I think. Yeah. If we did forget oh. you, I sincerely apologize. I got yes. one, more, one more. Dennis, thank you so much for helping out. For uh, At least I know yep. it was only for a couple hours, but we really appreciate you helping out, brother. Any help is greatly appreciated. Oh, of course. So anytime. I'm not going to turn and then all of And then also, just the last thing, a big shout out to all of our family and friends who have supported us on Facebook yep. by sharing. I know your mom, you, hey, Zach, your mom and your sisters have shared a lot of the stuff. My mom has shared a bunch of it. Uh, my uncle has shared a lot of it, too. Thank you. <laughs> and then also, Brandon, your parents as well yep. have been tremendous um, with helping out. I don't think they got you the, the plane tickets to go to New Jersey, you know, so, I mean, that's tremendous help. 
Um, uh, you know, thank you for everybody who's been liking our stuff, sharing our stuff, watching our stuff. We really appreciate it. Um, uh, you know, the uh, when we used to joke about our original podcast, like it's you know, it's ten people. We appreciate those ten people that were listening and watching. So, thank you. All right. All right, so let's talk about some movies. Uh, Mark, what have we been doing this month? What have you been doing this month? Uh, what have I've you been, been doing and not posting about working? Um, uh, you know what? I've actually posted the first couple of movies. I don't want to hear it. Or the you first couple, a couple two posts videos. on Instagram. Um, I, uh, we have been doing the uh, 100 Horror Movie Challenge for the month of October. Kind of divided up between the four of us, so 25 movies each. Correct. Um, I am incredibly behind still, but we still got some time left in the month, so barely. I'm gonna be hauling some ass. Um, uh, but uh, the uh, among the movies I have watched, um, I have disliked to. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm gonna put a half on on one of them, and then um, uh, I disliked one, hate but love one, and then love the other two ones um, uh, that I really had a lot of fun with. Um, uh, I loved Psycho. Um, I, the, I mean, we can go and I'll go into further detail, you know, that'll probably make my top, um, five. I'm just going to predict now. Um, but you know, things might change. I don't know. I still have a lot of fucking great movies on my list. Um, I saw House of Wax, which was, eh, um, uh, you know, it was very predictable at the time, but funny thing though, I didn't mention was, um, there is actually a horror trope in, in that movie mm-hmm. that I was amazed to actually see in there. Literally in one of the scenes, a girl is getting attacked upstairs, and the wife downstairs says, "Honey, I heard uh, I heard a noise upstairs." And the husband's like, "Oh, that's crazy. Let me go investigate." And then he runs upstairs and goes and investigates. And anyway, he does not die, but that is the start of a horror trope, which I love. But besides that, it's a really boring fucking movie. Um, and then uh, I saw the one big movie that was a big shock to me was a Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Um, I thought that was going to be a, you know, I heard good things about the movie, but I didn't expect it. I, I actually loved the movie. L- absolutely loved the movie. Um, the horror was awesome when it needed to be awesome. A dude threw himself into a wood chipper, which is pretty fucking fantastic. Um, and then also, impa- one dude impaled himself into a tree, which was also great. Um, uh, but the the humor it really works and lands when it needs to land. Um, the drama works when it needs to work. And surprisingly enough, the heart works when it needs to work. And actually, the movie actually has a lot of very sweet moments in it, which I really appreciate. Um, uh, and overall, a really solid fucking movie. Just surprised the hell out of me that it was that good um, and that I enjoyed it that much. Um, uh, I have a, I have an affinity for parody um, and satire. I'm and this sure was, you do. And this was definitely up my alley when it comes to uh, satire and parody. Um, uh, so, highly recommend that one. But obviously, you know, things will change as I, you know, start going through, banging through this list. Um, uh, you know, I'm very excited to see what I see. So, I know you guys are way ahead of me. Um, oh, yeah. so you actually got a lot more to talk about than I do, but please, by all means, uh, Brennan, hit it. Um, so I'm 17 into my list, so <laughs> our requirements are it either has to be a horror movie that you've not seen or you haven't seen it for at least five years. I'm going for a full 25 that I've never seen before. Um, <clears throat> I'm at 17, I'm just going to kind of roll them off real quick here, uh, and then there are I'm, I have no idea what my top five is going to be like. There are easily at least seven or eight on this list that can make my top five right now. Um, but the first one I watched was Larry Cohen's A Return to Salem's Lot, which is a sequel to Salem's Lot. A lot happens in this movie. Um, there's like a Nazi hunter in it. There's like a son. Like the main character's son screws a vampire, and the main character also screws a vampire. And he's hired to like write the vampire Bible. And then there are vampire children in vampire school learning vampire history about vampire Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, Wait, what? You heard me. Uh, <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm just trying to process this. <laughs> That's so, how I felt during this movie. A lot of things going um, on. There. I know you said there was like a, a thousand things. plots in this one movie, but holy shit! Yeah. Um, Is there Ernest goes to the mall involved, or 
Uh, actually, there was one part. And then they went to space. There, so basically, um, at the beginning of the movie, the main characters with this camera guy and they're filming a documentary, and they're on this like little rowboat, um, and the cameraman says something that the main character doesn't like, and he's just like, "You got something in your eye." What? Punches him in the eye, and he's about to drop the camera, and then the guy just like holds on the camera and is like, "Do not drop the camera." That's Brendan. Pretty much. The uh, um, but and then there's like his ex-wife who pawns off their, I guess, disturbed son onto him. Like this movie is like Manchester by the Sea, but with vampires and much more entertaining. Um, we saw a better vampire movie anyway um, that I forgot to talk about, but we'll we'll let Zach talk about that movie later. Okay. Um, oh yeah, you need to, you did not mention that. I did not mention that. This is that. one that I wanted you two to watch for the longest time. And I, I believe I mentioned it in our vampires episode. Oh um, uh, and and I really dug it. Um, yeah. Second movie is one that Zach and I kind of disagree about, and that's Netflix's In the Tall Grass. <laughs> Okay. Who, who, who was it that your fucking review was hilarious? <laughs> I can't remember if Zach or you. It was you. Zach's review, but I was in the background at one point. It, uh, that was actually how I learned that we had disagreed yep. on it, because I thought we were on the same page. And then, and no. then Apparently not. Who, who was the one who said, it, it, I just love their fucking review, that was grass, and it was tall. That's it. Yeah, people get lost in grass, and then they get lost again. And the so, night scenes were very, very dark. I don't mean content-wise. I mean, like, I... You couldn't I, see you, shit. You could not see anything. Like, cool. they did not have lights. Sounds familiar. We're not going to get into that? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> nope. I mean, acting nope. Was, the, the acting was all right for what it was. In all honesty, the director has done a similar premise much better with Cube. Go check out Cube. I was going to say, here's the thing. At least in this movie, I wasn't bored. Or wondering, like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And I also knew it was the same day and night. Yeah. You know, there wasn't a time of day change yeah. in every freaking shot. Well, nothing's yeah, happening. Okay, okay. Nothing's happening. Oh. Someone about a map. <laughs> nothing's happening. And it's over. The audience looks pretty pissed, pissed right now. Um, then I watched a movie with Crispin Glover called Willard. <laughs> oh, Crispin. Have you ever seen it? I have not, but every time somebody says Crispin Glover, I laugh. This was really good. Was it? All right. I was so into it from beginning to end. Nice. Um, see it. Th th this is one of the ones that is in consideration for my top five. Nice. These movies that I've been watching. It is an interesting name, Willard. Willard! Yeah. Um... Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Um, <laughs> it, I think so, it took 15 minutes for Brandon to finally ask the question, how the fuck did a cruise ship get to Crystal Lake? No, how did it get from to Crystal Lake, then from Crystal Lake to... Uh, no, no, it, it makes no sense. I really wish no sense. Wes was there. I really wish but how did, was there. How did this get from here? And then what over there? Nothing in that movie makes sense. It just has a couple cool kills and that's about it. Um, okay, but not to worry because then we watched a much better Friday 13th movie like two days later, which was Friday 13th of Vengeance, which we talked about when we talked about the New Jersey yeah. Horror Con earlier this episode. Um, then I watched... Backcountry, which is a bear attack movie, and that one I was actually very disappointed with it. I thought it would have been a much better short film. I just didn't feel like it had enough content to fill out a 90 minute movie. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's like literally like more than half the movie is the couple on their camping trip, and it just wasn't. It's there, there wasn't enough to keep me engaged. Um, the bear attack scenes were good when they happened, mm. but ultimately I felt it was it was a very front heavy movie, ah. and I don't feel Out the of content it. of the front part. It's very off balance. Yeah, it didn't just it, the the payoff did not match. The, the payoff wasn't worth the setup. I'd say. Fair enough. Um, then our friend Justin showed me the sequel to the town that dreaded sundown. 
which is called The Town That Dreaded Sundown. <laughs> um, we actually watched both of them back to back. I had seen the original a few years ago, thought it was okay, but then watching it again, it's just kind of like, nah, this isn't that good. Um, it's pretty much reliant on voiceover throughout the entire thing. It's just really awkward and weird. The killer in that movie is basically, the, the look of that killer is what Friday the 13th Part 2 ripped off. With the oh, that. that's that's the movie um, that it, okay. But then, in like 2011, they made a sequel that takes place 65 years later, and that one was really good. Like I didn't know what direction it was going to go. The kills were really the kill, some of the kills were brutal. Um, it was really well shot. It was shot by Michael Goy, who shot the entirety of American Horror Story Asylum, and he did I think maybe a third of the episodes of the first season of American Horror Story. Mm-hmm. Uh, he directs a lot of TV now. He directed an episode of Empire recently, an episode of DC Universe's Swamp Thing, which unfortunately got canceled. Um, I actually met him briefly at ASC Masterclass. Very nice guy, very knowledgeable person, very respected. Um, and yeah, he shot this movie, Town That Dreaded Sundown, and it looked great, it was paced well, the acting was great. There, I don't think there was a single aspect of that movie I didn't like. I... I very underrated, underappreciated horror movie from the last 10 years. And then I watched 1985's Demons. If you only ever watch one movie where somebody is driving a motorcycle in a movie theater chopping off demons' heads, and then when that, with a samurai sword, and then when that fails, he uses the blades of a crashed helicopter to chop off their heads. If you only watch one movie with that, make it this one. I can't think of many other movies that do that, but okay. Also, Alien gave us the chest burster. This movie gave us the back burster. Huh. Sure. You'll know the shot when it happens. I'm sure we will. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a slow setup, but it was a fun setup. Um, basically, people... One of those high-pitched movies. I was about to say, there. holy shit. Dude, that, it, 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 I... I, I it, it, Nineteen eighty-five Italian production. Um, basically, a test audience is brought in for a horror movie, and demons come out of the screen and terrorize the audience and dismember them and kill them and possess them. That actually sounds pretty great. It's pretty cool. Um, there are some punk rockers, cocaine addicts. You, you actually get an eighties cocaine scene in this movie, Mark. You get your eighties co- wow. co- cocaine scene. Not that I haven't seen that in Scarface or Die Hard, but that's okay. Or you yeah, know the like uh, Maximum Overdrive trailer. Um, <laughs> link yeah. in the description. And then, oh. so these next three, these next three I watched at the Music Box of Horrors, which the Music Box Theater is a movie theater here in, in Chicago. I shouldn't say here in Chicago, because we're in Champaign right now recording this. But back home in Chicago, we have the Music Box Theater, which is my favorite movie theater in the entire city. Every year they do the Music Box Horrors, which is a 24-hour horror movie marathon. And I've always wanted to go, and I finally got to go this year, and I stayed up for all 24 hours. Jesus. Um, In those seats. I'm also going to cover those 13 movies after I go through these movies. Um, I'll give Zach a chance to talk about his movies before I talk about Music Box Horrors. But these next three movies... um, even, even though they showed 13 movies there, as far as my 25 list, I only wanted to choose three that I felt were most notable. The first one is a Japanese movie that was shot on Super 8 film in 1995, edited in 2009, completed in 2012, Jesus. released in 2015. You can't get it over here in the States. I don't know how the music box got what? a copy of this. The, the f- fuck happened I, between I, the I, 90s and the 2000s? What? what? That's yeah. a huge... Um, did somebody, like, put it in a safety deposit box? It's like worse than all the boys of Mandy Lane. Like, how the fuck did... Dude, 90s to now. Dude, I, dude, I thought it, I thought it was fucked when uh, when MGM went out of business and and Cabin in the Woods <laughs> and got a two year delay until Lion Gate. Nope. Uh, no, I'm recently uh, finding out there's movies that have worse off than yeah. that. But Man, yeah, I, I watched that. Justin was next to me with this movie and we had a blast. This was basically a Japanese ripoff of Evil Dead. 
and it was so brilliant. It's called Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell. We've literally been talking about this. And it's about a bodybuilder who is basically trapped in a haunted house. I'm not going to go into the details of why that house is haunted or why he is there, but he is there with his girlfriend and a priest, and the priest gets possessed, and insanity ensues. The gore in this movie is so great. Um, Very creative. Like, there's a scene... Where the priest gets stabbed in the back of the head and his eye pops out still attached to the retina and when they take the knife out the eye goes back into his skull. <laughs> and the camera is right in front of his face and the eye it would be an excellent 3D shot if it were shot for 3D. Because that's like the say, horror equivalent of Looney Tunes. Yeah. Like literally, literally all I'm expecting is that the, 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 the best the, the best the, part the best part was there's a scene where he, Pretty much, the ghost of his dad tells him, you'll find your true weapon in the basement. He goes in the basement, he finds a shotgun, and it's basically almost literally shot for shot. Evil Dead 2, when he's like sawing off the shotgun and everything. And I just kind of lean over to Justin and I say to him, how do you say groovy in Japanese? And then, like, not even 30 seconds after I whisper that to Justin... <laughs> And this is a Japanese subtitle movie, by the way. The actor just says something, and the English subtitle simply says, Groovy. Wow, if you weren't a fucking Evil Dead ripoff before, <laughs> you, you are now. now. Wow. Holy shit. So we're just going to cement that in right there. Just, yep. Dude, all you yeah. need next was, is Hail to the King movie. The, the, the only DVDs we can find are on eBay, and they're Region 2, and... Just no, there, there needs to be an official North American release of Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell. Um, Jesus. There'll never be anything else like it. Shot in the goddamn 90s and released essentially now. Yep. Just shot on Super 8. Again, that's... And it was edited in 2012. It's like somebody yeah. lost it in their closet. It's just like, oh yeah, I forgot yeah, yeah. this. Holy shit, I forgot oh, yeah, I shot a movie. <laughs> I, I knew I left this somewhere. I Damn, it was... Baby, it was in the closet the whole time. <laughs> you think uh, anybody will buy this shit? I told you to check in the closet. People are sleeping here, Mark. Um, <laughs> next up was <laughs> Event Horizon. Huh? Um, I wasn't really with it for the first half, but then once it actually got going, I really enjoyed it. It's a fun movie. No, yeah, it was a good time. It was a very good time. No, Not all the CG holds up after all this time, but it was still a good time. I like how his voice just keeps getting higher and higher. Yeah! <laughs> yeah I'm a melt. That is so fucking weird. Um, the next one is one that I've really wanted to see for a long time, which is directed by Louis Teague, who's probably most famous for directing Cujo and Cat's Eye. Written by John Sayles, who also wrote the original Piranha, The Howling. Mm. Um, On my list. And stars uh, the recently deceased Robert Forster, may he rest in peace. Um, and that is Alligator. And uh, that movie's about a baby alligator that's flushed down a toilet and then he grows up, lives in the sewer, it basically becomes giant because he's feeding off toxic waste, and then he makes his way back up into the city of Chicago where he basically eats people and Robert Forster plays a cop that's trying to bring it down. It sounds ridiculous, but it's actually legitimately pretty darn good. And it's also based on an urban legend um, that is yeah. very prevalent it's in It's basically Chicago. a prequel to Chance the Snapper. Um, uh, I was going to say, it actually became true uh, yeah. like three months ago. Um, uh, minus this, the this toxic is another, waste. This is another one that's in consideration for my top five that I've watched right. so far. I really liked it. Um... And they actually, so Music Box tries to show as many film prints as possible, mm. um, and I'll kind of go into that a bit more when I go over these 13 movies, um, but the print was actually very good, but the color had faded to like pink, mm. which unfortunately happens to a lot of older prints. Um, but yeah, the print was in really good condition. I really liked the movie. I don't know if there's a Blu-ray of this out, but I would like to check out a Blu-ray or a DVD of it. Again, because I do think it's worth watching again, and I do want to see it with proper color as well. 
it was a good time. It was a really good time. Um, next up is the Troma movie Terror Firmer, which I bought the DVD. I blind bought it at New Jersey Horror Con along with Cannibal the Musical. Um, but yeah, the next movie is Terror Firmer. So then after that, I watched Chopping Mall. Um, oh, good. But no, uh, Terror Firmer. Zach, you watched a couple minutes of it. I did? Yeah. Wait a minute. You Is know, that that damn yeah. James? Oh, my fucking God. Uh, so basically, it's a no, trauma yeah, no, movie. No, no, hey, no. Hang on, hang on. You, what, you could talk about this during the podcast. This is all you need to know. Lemmy's in it. The creator of South Park's are in it. And, uh, what's his name? The, the Ron Jeremy's in it. That's it. Watch and, it. And apparently Eli Roth is in it. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. This is the movie they were describing to me. And, and uh, James Gunn wrote it? No, he, he, he co-wrote the book that inspired it. Either way, Disney clearly does not do research into what the fuck they're doing or who they're hiring. <sighs> Um, and then my point was uh, was also talking about Peter Jackson. I'll, I'll say this about Terror Firmer. Mark, if you think you had an emotional breakdown of the last 15 minutes of society... You ain't seen nothing yet? You ain't seen nothing yet, buddy. All Either right. way, there's um, going to be a screening of this with Wes and him at some yeah, point. I cannot wait. I had a good time watching it, but it's also one of those movies that... Almost from the moment it started, I watched it with a face that was kind of like this... I walked in and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm also pretty sure our neighbors thought I was watching porn. <laughs> Again, James Gunn. Just want to point that out. Guardians and of the trauma. Galaxy. Um, and yeah. they were surprised by everything that came out. <gasps> but yeah, it's basically about a serial killer on the set of an, inter- of an independent movie. Again, don't talk about it now. Let people go watch it. Yeah, and watch get- it. Th- this is a movie where the less you know going into it, the better it's going to be. I honestly don't know what else I could say. Like, anything else I say would be a spoiler. Like, it has to be seen to be believed. Those five minutes you saw were nowhere near the worst of it. Good. Either way. Next up is Chopping Mall. Excellent exploding head shot. That's pretty much it. Um, it's not a bad movie, but it's there's nothing particularly memorable about it um group of kids stay overnight in a shopping mall that just got robot guards and the robot guards kind of go rogue and kill people dick miller has has a cameo Hmm. dick miller um so i guess it's worth it for dick miller and the exploding head um i mean i've seen barbara crampton's also in it so i mean i know when i've seen the exploding head it's pretty cool but like yeah but your biggest thing was like that's the movie yeah um I was kind of disappointed by it. It's not bad, but it's not good either. Uh, next up is one that I really, 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 really liked, and that's Summer of 84. It's about a group of kids in the summer of 1984. They believe that their um, neighbor, who's a cop, may be a serial killer. And so they're spying on him, trying to gather evidence, and it's just really good. Like, on the surface... If you watch the trailer, and even within like the first few minutes of it, you're going to think, okay, they're just trying to capitalize off the success of Stranger Things. But no, like this act, like Stranger Things to me will never be great because literally every shot and every line of dialogue is like a pop culture reference. And it's like, I get it. You, you've watched E.T. and Cujo and all these other movies. Um... It's like, it's a good series, and I will even say at times it's very good, but I can never call it great because I literally know everything it's borrowing from, whereas Summer of 84 doesn't go for that. Um, You do believe that these characters are living (coughs) in the 1980s. They're not, like, there are barely any references in it, I think, now that I think about it. Um... And it's a much more grown-up story as well. Uh, Harry from Mad Men plays the cop. Yeah, I know. Um, I saw the trailer for it. You'll never look at him the same ever again. I believe that. You like the, You'll never look at him the same ever again. Um, but yeah, that, that that's a movie that when it ended, like, it's like I felt something change in me. That is now the second Mad Men uh, cast member that has been a horror movie. In th- this year, who's the other one again? Penny. Oh, it, right, us. And us. Though summer of '84 was last year. Okay. Yeah. Which actually, 
Music Box had a midnight showing of it last year, and I believe they had the writers in person to do a Q&A afterwards, uh. and I d wasn't able to make it to it, and after watching it the other night, I am totally kicking myself, because I thought this was brilliant. Uh, not just one of the best horror movies I've seen in the last ten years, but I would even go as far as calling it one of the best movies I've seen in the last ten years. Wow. I... Shit. Wow. I really like this. I can't wait to show it to you guys. World's End is um, now dethroned. It is not dethroned. World's End is still my favorite of the last 10 years, but Summer of 84 is up there. Uh, next up is a 1930s Universal movie with Boris Karloff and Charles Lawton and Gloria Stewart of Titanic fame. Wow. Uh, I believe this is one of her first movies, and that's The Old Dark House, Five Travelers end up at an old dark house and Boris Karloff is there and there's a creepy family and stuff happens stuff happens it's not one of the better universal horror movies it's not one, one of the like the classic monsters it definitely has some atmosphere to it um it was okay um probably a pioneer of its time I can understand why it's been on so many top 100 horror movies lists it's probably one of the important movies of the 30s. Um, it's probably the same way, you know, I felt about Hassle Wax. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, but I do think there are much better movies from that time period that hold up a lot more. Um, if you want to get away from the actual Universal Monsters, I think The Black Cat is a really good one. Um, so yeah, The Old Dark House, worth watching if you like the era. Um, I got something out of it, but it's not... It's no Frankenstein or Wolfman or Invisible Man or The Mummy. Um, it, it's not up to the quality of the classic Universal Monsters. It's not up to the quality of the Black Cat. But it is worth watching if you want to watch like a good historical horror movie. Fair enough. Um, next after that is one that Justin showed me that I first read about when I was in the seventh grade. And that's The Dead Next Door. Um... I'm trying to remember what happened to it now. Um, very low budget. Some good gore effects. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, and then the last one I watched is Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, which this is a mockumentary that takes place in a world that Freddy Krueger is real, Jason Voorhees is real, Michael Myers is real, and there's a film crew following around this guy named Leslie Vernon, who is preparing himself to be the next big slasher. And he goes into like how he chooses what group of teens he's gonna follow, how he prepares his weapons, how he creates like red herrings, like just this whole process. And it has this bizarre innocence to it for like the first half. And it's just a delightful horror movie and it twists some tropes onto its head. Delightful. Um, delightful. That's how I describe it. All right. That's another one that's... I first heard about this movie when it first came on DVD, and I never knew what it was, and I finally saw it, and it's... I had a good time watching it. Uh, there are a lot of surprise cameos in there. I think you guys would have a blast with it. It was a blast. Nice. Um, Zach, your movies so far. Grass was good. Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> what about the vampire movie? Yeah. Oh, uh, Near Dark. Yes, sir. Yeah, Near Dark was a fun one. Um, Bill Paxton's in it, so that should be reason enough to watch it. Um, it was Near Dark was great. Near Dark is great, actually. It's an '80s movie, so that's another thing that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, violent vampires. Bill Lance Paxton. Hendrickson as well. Bill Paxton was great in that movie. Actually, no. It, all the especially the vampire yeah. cast, they were phenomenal. Lance Henriksen, Bill Paxton, oh, uh, what was, what's her name? Jenny Wright. Jenny Wright? Yeah. Yeah. Je the, the blonde or the one from Aliens? The one from Aliens. Um, uh, what was her name? Yeah. I, I'm going to kick myself on it. Uh, it's, it's Literally like, about a, a, a traveling gang of vampires. Essentially half the cast of Aliens was in this movie. Jeanette Goldstein. Jeanette Goldstein, yeah. Uh, Jeanette Goldstein, Lance Henriksen, Bill Paxton... There are essentially a traveling group of vampires who are just, well, surviving. Um, then the, uh, what the hell is the younger one's name? Hmm? 
Uh, what was the younger one's name? No, which one? The, the, the blonde like, one. The, the blonde Jenny Wright. Yeah, Jenny Wright. Also, she, who was also in The Lawnmower Man, by the way. Hmm. Yeah, that's a movie. Uh, she ends up running into this one guy, hooks up with him, turns him into a vampire. They kidnap him, and now they're on the road. Yeah, Zem trying to survive as a vampire. I liked that first scene in the morning after he was bitten, and he's like smoking, just has no idea what's going on. Yeah. Um, there's a scene where Bill Paxton kills some people. In a, like that whole bar scene. Oh, whole bar scene is just. You could cut the tension in the air with a knife. Oh, and then and then when it, when the tension's finally cut, it's 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 yeah. such a fun fucking. Scene. You'll never look at Spurs the same way. You ever will again. not. You will not, dude. And then Bill <laughs> Paxton takes it. Spurs to a whole new level. Do you guys remember what I said when we were watching that movie out loud? It was like dead silent, and I'm like, this kid does not know how to vampire. <laughs> He really sucks at it. Yeah, but anyway, really sucks at don't, it. Don't don't spoil the whole movie. No. It's the, uh, oh, it was a very there, very fun movie. Hey Zach, there is there is one of my movies that I forgot, and and I would be remiss if I didn't bring it up because especially because you're here and everything else. The one I liked and and hated at the same time, which would be Freddy versus Jason. He yeah. didn't hate it. He loved it. I okay. The the I, I, I if you have not watched my Instagram video on this. Um, it's a terrible movie. It is not a the, terrible movie. The, it is a great movie. The acting is terrible. It wants me to care about plot points when I do not care about it. That's not bad was, acting. That's bad writing. It, it was all of those things. Was I immensely entertained by it? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I've actually got a story about Freddy vs. Jason. Oh, and I want to hear it in a second. Um, uh, but the, um, but the, the, because the acting is so bad... I, uh, every time they're trying to be serious, I laughed hysterically the, through this entire movie. I was laughing so hard. And when they tried to be funny, I rolled my eyes. But the good news is the gore is good when it needs to be good. Um, there are some good moments. And when Jason and Freddy do finally throw down, it is really cool. Except one scene that I, I, if I rolled my eyes any harder, they would have fell out of my fucking head. When, when he pinned, didn't know physical evidence to support that. I really wish I was recording myself. When he fucking throws him around the room and you hear the pinball effects like he's in a pinball machine. I, I went, oh my god. I can't believe they're fucking doing this right now. I can't believe this is happening. Is this real life? The, uh, but... The, the, and the last fight between them was is super awesome when Freddy finally... This is one of the most bloodiest things and brutal fights I've ever seen in my life. Because they just they constantly tear. keep stabbing and ripping each other apart. To the and none of them are dying. Dude's and the, blood is just going everywhere. everywhere dude. That is probably the best versus fight movie we will ever get. No, yeah. It, I... The, the only part of that I didn't like is there wasn't more of the fighting. I would have loved I think I also that, would have liked more Freddy Kills. Oh, yeah. No, that's... Well, my, more Freddy Kills, but I'd like more fighting between him and Jason. My two things were... Actually, three things. My three problems with that movie were... One, Freddy gets one goddamn kill, and it's so just boring that yeah. it's like... He literally just really, did it to send a message. Yeah, essentially. It was like, really? That's it? Fuck you. Two, that, that stupid thing where Jason is afraid of water. The That's fool who kind of wrote what my story is about. Yeah, yeah, the fool who wrote that. What? Same writers as the Friday Thirteenth remake and the new Baywatch starring The Rock. Yeah, look where that got you. That's all I'm gonna say. And Kane Hodder wasn't Jason, but the guy who did play Jason was still really good. I just dude, wish Jason had some phenomenal kills. What was your favorite kill in that? I know mine right off the bat. It was actually the first kill of the movie. Oh, the fucking stabbing in the bed, or no, the, the one where... No, 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 the stabbing in the bed, when he folds him up yeah, it's in just, the bed. <laughs> and then, <laughs> it's like, damn, great. They, you know what? That's, at that moment, I, I was like, I was like, oh boy, <laughs> I'm in for a movie. I really <laughs> love the fucking corn maze scene where the, he just twists the guy's neck, then the guy lights Jason on fire, realizes, oh shit, that didn't work. Fuck, it starts running. There's just a trail of burning corn just following him slowly. He makes it out of the corn maze. Machete. 
And then he kills like 20 people. And then he just him. walks and he's just slashing fucking literally rave members and li stuff like ra that. Yeah, rave member. Like, I can't tell you how many times I roll my fucking eyes during this movie. They just, I mean, oh my god, they're having a fucking rave in the middle of a crop circle. Look at this. This is fucking crazy. The, um, and the way they douse Jason is a rave member walks in front of a beer keg, and oh, yeah. the beer keg just spews beer all over Jason, and which somehow doesn't make it worse. It makes it better. It actually... It, it douses his fire, which I'm just like... Eh, oh, God. Okay. Dude, it, dude, there's so many great... It, the whole, dude, when they... It, it, it actually, you, the last fight under this, when they finally pull him off and the metal music comes on, and I'm like, all right, here we go. And they do rip each other apart to the last possible fucking second. Of that They're movie. killing each other with their own limbs. Yeah, literally with their own limbs. It, it, it was pretty fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, there were. Uh, you know what? The, the one cool part though is, and and I can't remember was Freddy's uh, one kill where he actually became the fucking um, uh, the slug from Alice in Wonderland and went down that kid's neck or went down that kid's throat. That was. It was so weird. I, don't I'm not, I haven't seen the movie since. The, that was such a weird thing. I, I'm just like. It was super weird. But the result of what happened next was pretty awesome. When he's possessed by Freddy. Yeah. And he's, and he, and he's sitting, standing in the hallway like, what the fuck is he doing? He's like, come here, bitch. No, and he like, literally has two, he literally he has two elephant tranquilizers hiding behind his back. He's like, I'm going to take out Jason. And he did. It was great. The, uh, it was that fun. guy really did look like Jason Mewes, though. <laughs> yeah, he did. The, uh, but yeah, it was, it, it, it was... He just acted like him, too. It's like... I, I, I can't even get mad at the movie because it, it was immensely entertaining. I, I thoroughly enjoyed how bad the acting was and how and how bad much I, I did not give a fuck about any bad of acting. these. It's, it's literally just bad characters. But sure, D all of the above. The um uh, and Mister, I'm a great A actor. Th there was like there was like so many plot points like where apparently like the father like kills the mother, but the only reason he kills the mother is because she was possessed by Freddy. And like I'm like I don't care at all. <laughs> I, you you like you're trying to you get gotta me. put something in the movie. Mark. I know you know because the movie has to happen. I, I just, understand. I just want to get the goddamn sequel already. I I actually would love to see that sequel. Just um, do the sequel before Kane and. Robert are dead, please. But oh my god! Or literally, you're so old they can't do it anymore. Yeah, like maybe five, three more years. I don't know. That was it. That, that movie was what? That's like pessimistic. Um, what year was that movie? Like oh three. Oh three. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. That was long three. That was a long time. Uh, but yeah, I have a brief story about it. So when I was going to school at SUNY Fredonia. This is my pre-Chicago days. I was taking a film class there. And the teacher there, uh, her name was Amber, very nice person. Uh, she showed a clip, we, like basically we were analyzing color that class. Okay. And she showed a clip from Frey versus Jason, and it was that boiler room fight. And it was uh -huh. basically, um, well, Freddy's like fighting Jason, and everything's red. And then when the pipe finally bursts, and the water comes out, everything mm -hmm. turns blue, blue. blue. And she's like, "I bet whatever colorist did that was like." This is great. This is brilliant. I'm gonna win an Oscar for this. Not with that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I just broke Zach. <laughs> we love you. Don't <laughs> fucking touch me. The uh, so alright, Zach. So that story is done. Um, uh, what are the what are some of the movies you watched that stick out? Just give you a few. Um, they, they you, like either were let's blatantly see. bad or, bl or really oh, really good. I saw Leviathan finally, or as I like to call it, the thing underwater but less thing. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great either. It was kind of just meh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what else? Did you I watch remember? Species yet? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get to that at some point. I watched Hatchet again. How was that? It just kind of is. Yeah, it's it's just kind of it's a. Not bad. It's not bad. It's gory, I but at the same it time, good, it's. But it just kind of. It's ends. it's more like, I just don't care. Yeah. I'd much rather see Kane kill people as Jason or somebody. God, I don't know. Better. Maybe and then there wasn't a single character that I liked at all. It's like mm. I I just don't give a damn. Also, it's in New Orleans. I don't know why, I just find that so boring. Okay. Yeah. Um, any others? 
I've watched like half of my list. I just can't remember what the hell I've watched. What have I watched? We'll get back to Zach. We talked about, well, well, you talked about Friendly Vengeance. We talked about Grass. We talked about... Oh, H2O. Let's talk about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I, can't, I don't want to hear about this. Well, it's not bad. It's not a bad movie. In fact, it's one of the better it's Halloween just... movies. It just takes, you know, an hour and 20 minutes to get to the actual movie yeah, it's to start. an hour and 26 minute long movie. Oh, it's an hour. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not even an hour thirty. Hour and f- it literally takes an hour and fifteen minutes for anything to actually happen. Yeah. Like it, we were watching it, and it's like, is this movie almost over? Yeah. Th- nothing's happened. Yeah. And it's like, huh? I mean, it was interesting. The characters are pretty good, and uh, yeah. And as far as like Michael showing down Lori years later the reboot did it better the reboot from last year did well it the reboot from last year is arguably the best Halloween movie out there with the exception of one those two go hand in hand but it, no <laughs> did you, you were so in the minority on that one brother I don't care I'm right I, no. uh, that's because you have a hard out for Tom Atkins he really does and that look, has nothing to do with this that has Shit. everything to do look, with this we all love Tom Atkins Tom Atkins is amazing he cannot save that movie that's when you know you're fucked, but not even Tom Atkins can save your movie. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't even seen the movie. The, uh, I've seen enough of the movie. The, uh, anyway. Um, uh, but yeah, no, the, any, a, any other movies, Zach, that you're thinking about? Hmm. Yeah, that would be a no. If you get closer, I'm gonna stab you. Zach, no stabbing. Oh. No stabby stab. No! Do you really want this? Brendan, come back here. God, they're like children. <laughs> the, uh, this is what happens when you live with somebody for more than a year. Well, yeah, that's true. So, so right, you know what so the... So, five, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Doing. Done. I got nothing. I got nothing. Um, music box It, it doesn't help that me and him have watched, like, most of the same movies. I've seen a lot of independent stuff and... Yeah, some stuff I just can't talk about right the, now. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, I don't know. I'll have my list and everything planned out to talk about when we actually when we actually do our recap. All yeah. Right. Um. So I'm gonna cover Music Box of Horrors real quick. It was a blast. Twenty four hours. Um. Our friend Justin was with me for twelve of those hours from like three to three. Um. Really good time. Excellent audience to watch it with. Um, to watch all those movies with. Um, at the end, they took a picture of everybody that survived <laughs> to the end. Uh, it was a struggle towards the end. What I, if I some jerk lie. just showed up at the last minute? Yeah. They, so was it was it was it noon to noon? It was it? noon to noon. Damn. That's yeah. fucking. Rough. And I got a seat right in the middle, and I was lucky I did because I got there like a half hour later than I intended to. It was a blast. Um, I bought. Um, a music box of horrors shirt there, um, which I'll probably be wearing that on one of our future episodes of the podcast. Honestly, the big thing with that theater is those chairs get uncomfy very quickly. Helps keep you awake. Yeah, um, no shit. Sh- yeah. It's the only reason you're awake. So I'm just gonna awake. quickly go over these thirteen. Um, okay, so we've got. The 1928 silent movie, The Man Who Laughs, that was a 35 millimeter film print. They had a band there doing a live score for it. Yeah, that's cool. Um, that's the Man Who cool. Laughs, uh, the main character in that is actually the inspiration for the original artwork for the Joker back in 1940. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you look at, if you look up Man Who Laughs on Google or something, go into images, and the first image you see from that silent film is likely gonna match one of the early uh, drawings of the Joker from 1940. Um, good movie. I mean, back in the... like, The uh, host for the first half at the beginning of Music Box of Horrors, he was saying that this year they wanted to kind of ask the question, what is horror? Um, and back in the 1928, Man Who Laughs was meant to be like this sweeping um, historical romance movie. There's some pretty horrific stuff in it. Like, there's a lot of torture, and it's like 
one of those movies that wasn't intended to be a horror movie, but kind of became a horror movie as time mm. went on. Mm. Uh, so it's interesting to look at it from that point of view. Uh, the next movie is a lesser known movie called Office Killer. Um, it was okay. It starts off very straightforward. Basically, there's a shy, introverted um, female office employee who basically kills off other employees. Mm. Um, it's very straightforward. It's just kind of like she kills this person, and then she tries not to get caught, kills another person, repeat. Um, it does get a little crazy towards the end. That last 20 or so minutes was pretty darn crazy. That's actually where Justin came in, so they only mm. got the good parts of the movie. <laughs> um, it was okay. If It's very hard to find, but if you find it, it's worth a watch. Molly, Molly Ringwald is in it. Really? Yeah. Um, Michael Imperioli is also in it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's worth a look. Uh, but it's it's worth a look if you find it. Don't put too much effort into finding it, but, you know. If, if, it's, if, 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 you if, if it's available to you, give it a watch. Stars Carol Kane, who never does bad, never gives a bad performance. Next up is one that I've been look, really looking forward to and was kind of disappointed by. And that's the 1970s movie, Let's Scare Jessica to Death. I felt nothing happened in the movie. So she was never scared to death. Eh. And neither was Brian. Oh, spoiler alert, I'm sorry. And it's, <laughs> I, I really couldn't tell you what it was about. Um, the director was there to do a Q&A afterwards. Unfortunately, their sound setup that night wasn't the greatest. And they just wouldn't hold the microphones close to their mouths. So I couldn't hear anything, so that's when I did some shopping and looking around at the vendors. <laughs> um, which is unfortunate, because it's like I would have liked to hear what he had to say, because those Q&As are always interesting, but if the sound setup doesn't work, it uh, doesn't really matter. Especially, and what, what really ticked me off, too, is the audience just wouldn't shut up during it, either. So, oh, so yeah, that, that, that's, that's, the one, that's the one bad thing I have to say about the audience, is they were... It was very talkative during the Q&A, so, yeah. Uh, then there was Demons 2, the sequel to Demons. Uh, this one, the demons wreck havoc on an apartment building. And I think Justin said it the best. That was not a good movie, but that was a very fun movie to watch. Hmm. So it's like I, a reaction to Freddy vs. Jason. I highly enjoyed it. I recommend it. It's one of those movies that it's not a good movie, but it's a darn good movie. <laughs> I hate that line. Then there was Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell. Already covered that one. Um, which so far, like those first four movies were all film prints. Man Who Laughs, Office Killer, Demons 2 were all 35mm film prints. Let's Scare Jessica Death was um, a 16mm film print. Um, Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell was the first digitally projected one. But it looks good for a Super 8 transfer. Next up was Neil Marshall's personal film print of Dog Soldiers. Uh, Neil Marshall, of course, is the director of Dog Soldiers. He also directed The Descent, directed a couple episodes of Game of Thrones, notably Blackwater and Watchers on the Wall. My favorite episode. Um, He's he, done a lot of good stuff. He headed the Netflix Lost in Space series. Hmm. Um, Never saw it, but I heard. I've heard good things. He's actually, done a lot of other TV series. He did an episode of Hannibal. He did an episode of Constantine. Hmm. Uh, I believe he did the pilot for Black Sails. Oh, okay. okay. That's another show I need to watch at some point. His name is unfortunately on the new Hellboy, but we kind of talked about that a little earlier this year, and I don't want to go into that too much right now. He was supposed to be there in person for a Q and A. Um, but unfortunately, he had a family emergency and he wasn't able to make it. Um, but yeah, it's the music box host said that he was heartbroken. And of course, since I'm a huge fan of Dog Soldiers and The Descent, it was... But it was a really good-looking film The Descent's a fantastic movie. Yeah. In place of his Q&A, they showed an episode of Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> nice. Which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Next up was Event Horizon, which I've already covered. Um, and then next up was the last movie that Justin was there for, was there for, 
which is a 1987 independent movie called Retribution. Um, the first nine or ten minutes of this movie was excellent. No dialogue. The music was great. The cinematography was great. And it's just one of those opening sequences that just built up the tension and just really sets up the stage very well. And it's still a big butt coming on. And it's like Justin and I, like, when at, at the first line of dialogue, I leaned over to Justin and we were just both like, that was a really good opening. Like, th- we thought this was going to be like one of those gems that just never found an audience and that we were going to be seeing a really great movie here. And then you figured out why that hasn't been seen. Uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> when, a, when a man enters a room and is assumed he is a fool, when he opens up his mouth, all doubt is removed. So, I would call Let's Scare Jessica to Death probably the worst movie I saw, just because nothing happens. The only thing that puts Retribution above that is the opening sequence was that good. Wow. Um, so it's about an artist who tries to commit suicide by jumping off a building. Mm. Um, he lives, Mm. but during that time when they're reviving him, Mm. um, the spirit of a murdered Italian gangster, it doesn't possess him because he's still himself, but the gangster basically takes control of him whenever he goes to sleep to wreak revenge on those responsible for his death. Okay. And basically there's a prostitute that lives in the artist's building that he's friends with. And... Okay. There's a point in this movie where I lean over to Jess and I'm just like, I'm like... 80% 80% sure this movie is just the director's wish fulfillment. Hmm. Um, and then, right after I said that... Bangs the prostitute. This is after he bangs the prostitute. Ah, okay. Um, that was a... But after, I, after that, I say to him, I'm like 80% sure this movie is the director's wish fulfillment. And then after I say that, the main character is asleep in the bed and the prostitute's standing in the doorway and before she turns off the light, she just whispers... I wish you were my boyfriend. And then I'm just like, 100%. Uh, 100%. 100%. This is director's wish fulfillment. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, no, that's... Yeah, that's... Oh. Um, wow. I mean, if you want to make a movie, make a movie. Uh, no, don't do that, folks. No, it's... This was... This was a vanity project. It wasn't very good. Um, it was a long movie, too. It was... I think it might have been the longest movie in this marathon. Really? It was like um, it was like an hour fifty seven. Nice. Oof. Oh, could be worse. It could have been worse. It was pretty bad. Um. Yeah. Um. Next up was Alligator, which I already covered. Then it was the Japanese body horror classic. Tetsuo, the Iron Man, which is about a man who gets a curse placed on him and he turns into like this part man, part machine, and his penis becomes a drill. Okay. Good night, folks. Uh, <laughs> that, they showed this one at like 5 or 5.45. It was in the like morning. pretty oh. early in the morning. It was one of those... Okay, I'm just gonna roll with this. Like we're gonna fuck you back awake with a drill. Did what? You know what? If they were gonna gonna put on that movie, that would absolutely be the time that you would want to put on the movie. Sun can't be out just yet. The and everybody has to be slightly delirious. That whole audience bonded over that movie. I believe that it's just like, what the fuck are we watching? I have no idea. Um, (laughs) I believe that. But yeah, the, the reason I mentioned the drill penis is because Justin told me, I wish I could stay for Tetsuo, but there's a part in that movie that I want you to tell me what you thought of it. You're going to know what it was when you see it. And it happened, and I'm just kind of like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've seen Society and a lot of other stuff, so it's like, okay, 
That's just one more thing. Bring it on, Tetsuo. <laughs> Bring it on. But it was good. Um, if you like body horror, you should see it. And then it was the 1981 Halloween 2. Um, because you gotta be very specific. Because it's not the Halloween 2 that Rob Zombie shot. And it's not the Halloween 2 that we got last year. Which is just called Halloween, which is the third Halloween, not to be confused with Halloween 3. Also, don't get it confused with Halloween that Rob Zombie made, which was Halloween 1. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you know what? And, and, and that's not even the worst one. Have Brandon tried to explain the fucking Texas Chainsaw timeline. We'll get that which, video up at some point. At some point. God only knows when. Um, then it was The Fly 2, um, which is not a bad movie. I, I think it has a bad rap for... And it's... When you're following a classic like The Fly... You're not going to get the fly, but I thought this movie did enough different that it does stand as a respectable sequel. It's not one of the greats, but there's some enjoyable stuff. There's some really good makeup effects in it. Um, the lead is pretty likable. Um, the script is a little weak at points, but it's really good. Which, actually, two of the writers on it were Mick Garris and Frank Darabont. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then the big finale was the original 1992 movie of Buffy the Vampire Slayer with Christy Swanson and Paul Rubens and Rutger Hauer, may you rest in peace. Um, Donald Sutherland's also in it. <laughs> For good measure. Yeah. Uh, Luke Perry's also in it. That's interesting. Um, and there was somebody else in it where I'm just like, really? He's in it? Uh, who was it? That one, yeah. Uh, it was David Arquette. David Arquette. Was David Arquette's in that wait, movie. Really? Yep. And Stephen Root. We're literally just talking about David and Arquette. Thomas Jane. What? Yeah. Wait, who the fuck does David Arquette play in that movie? I don't remember him at all. He was. You'd recognize him if you saw it again. I really should rewatch that movie. It's been. A long it was a good time. time. Oh yeah, it's a good movie. I need to watch it again. I need to give I'm trying to see if there's a picture of shake. David Arquette to show Zach here, but nothing's coming up, unfortunately. Yeah, that was a good finale. Um, very enjoyable. Um, and then when it was over, we took the big picture of the audience members that survived. And then I just hightailed at home, passed out for four hours. Four? <laughs> Jesus. Four. Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah. I don't remember much after that. Probably. It was a good time. I'd yeah. do it again. Well, maybe I'm yeah. sure you will. That's a long. Because I'm, yeah. cra- I'm easily the craziest person when it comes to stuff like that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm tall for that shit. Yeah. Even though I'm younger than you. Um. Uh, but uh, yeah. 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 So. Um, well, let's uh, let's wrap this yeah, bad let's wrap boy. it up because my voice is starting to go, and we've got a long day ahead of ourselves tomorrow. Zach, squirrels, cool. B man, it's been a good year. It has been a very very good year. Um, uh, better than I ever anticipated. So, and, uh, and also that has a lot to do with all of you. So we really appreciate y'all. If you could please like, share, subscribe, you could find us on Instagram and Facebook under Midwest Horror Network. Officially. Officially. The, the, the changeover is done. Facebook finally approved our name change. So Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all three, we are finally Midwest Horror Network. I don't know why Facebook wouldn't allow us to do it, but... they, they This is not the time for that talk, so. <laughs> No, it's not. The um, And uh, of course, if you could please uh, share, uh, share it to your aunts, brothers, sisters, uncles, best friends, that would always be appreciative. Thank you so much. And actually, before we sign off, it is 1 a.m. on October 27th, Happy. so it is Happy. officially our one-year anniversary. Happy anniversary, now. gentlemen. Happy anniversary, Zach and Mark. And then, of course, um, and to David, who's not here with us tonight. So, thank you so much, and we'll see you soon.